folks. Sorry about the poor lighting, but I'm going to roll with it today. This is the uh, rear axle on the Axial SMT10 monster truck for the Max-D I have. We are going to just take it apart, clean it, re-lubricate uh, it with some uh, marine grease. Nothing too crazy. This really hasn't been any mud or water, so it should be pretty clean, but... I have not taken these apart since I bought it, so I'd rather just take it apart, clean it up, see how it looks, and kind of prepare it for uh, the new year. Now, if you are just looking to quickly throw some uh, grease in there, you can take these four bolts off. Uh, I'm going to do that just to show you, but otherwise, uh, you can just leave it on when you take it apart. But this is, uh, I believe, 1.5 millimeters. Let's see. Yep. Now I'm not using this just because this bit's kind of starting to round out. So I just got the old school one here. Just be careful when uh, doing these. You don't want to strip anything out. Alright, so these screws aren't that big. Let's see, not too big. But once you get them all loose, take the cover off. You can see the, uh, the gears in there. There we go. So this is still all the stock grease that came with it. But, um,. Yeah, if you're just looking to pop that off real quick, throw some grease on the side, spin it around, and pop the cover off. Very convenient. Uh, I know most of my vehicles I know of, pretty sure they all have just a solid front cover, um, one half. So this is the only one that I have the option right now for just to pop off and lubricate. But again, this don't really go through anything as far as water and stuff, so it's not really a big deal. But I know like the newer Axial SEX 10 twos and some of those ones have the diff covers already on, so it's not too bad. You can just take them off and clean it up without disassembling the whole axle. But just do that to show you real quick, demonstrate uh, how you can go about doing that if you are new to the hobby, because some people might not realize it or afraid of stripping out the screws or maybe just haven't looked so just want to let you guys see that now I'm going to take apart the axle after I tighten these back down I don't think it should affect anything but we'll see I think we're going to leave those just halfway down just in case we do need to back them out because they're kind of long so they might actually interfere with it but so first I'm just going to take the wheel nuts off then in here you got your little grub screw which should be a 1.5 yep just loosen enough to slide this thing off Maybe they go all the way out. It just needs to be. There we go. So there's that. You will have a pin right here. That one's pretty stuck on there, so you might need a screwdriver, or some flathead, or something to get that off. If you want now, you can just kind of knock that pin back, pull that out. 
set that aside. I kind of just will work both sides at the same time. Just throw that grub screw with it. A lot of times you just back the grub screw out just enough and it'll be easy enough to pop out. There we go. Like that one is the left end. Set that aside. Pen. And I'm going to work on this part here with the little 2.0 hex. Easiest thing to do so you know what screws go where, just keep them with the parts itself. Makes it a lot easier. This just kind of slides out like that. Just give that axle end just a push back so you can pull away from the hub itself. Then right now, that's going to stick, so just leave that be. Come to the other side. Do the exact same thing. go so now I'm actually going to work on taking this top brace off should be just the two screws I'm going to work on Maybe this one too, let's see. Pretty long one right there compared to these flatter stubby ones. There we go. Now we can remove that top brace. That exposes all that. Now these I believe will be a 2.5. What I got right here. Yep. Got these two, then two over there, and that should split the axle completely. If you're just gonna go and do this by yourself, and you haven't really taken any of that axle or other ones apart, maybe take pictures ahead of time or video it just so you know what goes where. Like I said, you can separate your bolts and parts, but sometimes, like this, you might mount it upside down or something, not knowing it should go like that. So just be cautious of that. And then you could also even try to just lay these parts down as they would be put back on. That might help as well. Oh, there goes an axle rod. So, those things are pretty long. Just going to set that aside. So, these uh, axle rods are one shorter than the other. You can't mix them up when putting them back because the side's obviously shorter. So, that's where your short one's going to go long over here. I'm going to take this diff cover off just because I'm thinking we can. Uh, might have to access the other bolts from the inside. A lot of the other, like the S Axial SCX10 I have, you will just take off, I think, four or so bolts and the whole front cover will come off, this whole thing. Just kind of split down the middle. And it will come off in one piece, exposing everything. But I think on these axles, you're going to have to possibly keep this cover off take off these inner bolts just to uh, get access to that because this might be built more like an actual axle compared to some of the others out there so 
So I'm going to just go ahead and take these four bolts out and uh, yeah, go from there. Alright, so that's done. Again, if you're just looking to service this real quick, just pop that cover off and you can go go ahead and uh, just throw some lubrication in there and you'll be good to go. But uh, I kind of want to do a full service on it. Just like I said, I have not done anything with it yet. So I like to at least break it apart, get a good look on the inside and see what's going on. So as you can see, I pried that up. Whole uh, system came out there. If you really want to, you can unbolt that, take that all apart, but I'm not going to do that. Um, down there you can see the uh, pinion, maybe, if it's not too dark. Again, sorry for the poor lighting, guys. Um, I don't take that out either all the time. I have before, but usually I'll leave that be. Sometimes I'll try to work out that inner bearing if I could for the outside, but I really don't mess with them generally just because it's, as long as it's fine, I don't see the point. So you just pretty much spin it, see if it has any grittiness or not. If it spins freely, smooth, then your, your bearing's good. I'll uh, end up lubricating that later on, but if you want to take this out, you just simply push this down and that will pop all out. You can just pull it out. I might just do for you guys is a demonstration, but so that's all you gotta do. Push down on it, pops out. There's a little C clip on the end. If you have to change this out, you can uh, pop that little clip off. This should come off, and then just remember if you're putting a new one on or something, you just gotta make sure that C clip's in. And then there's a pin that will be in the back right there. Um, but yeah, down there you have another bearing as well. And then you can pop these out pretty easy with the this all out. But um, since it's out, I'm just going to keep it out. Grab some uh, paper towel or rag, clean this out of the old factory grease. Uh, scrub this outside. I got a lot of paint from the uh, last winter's freestyle in the snow. Just kind of stuck to it. So I'm going to take the toothbrush, hit the sink real quick, get all this dirt and grime off these parts, and then... Uh, catch back up with you guys. Okay, I didn't do uh, anything crazy. I didn't submerge it or anything. Uh, I just simply ran this a couple of times underwater, just scraped a little bit, just get some like grime and dirt off it. If you really wanted to just submerge this to get it all clean, I would suggest so it's not rusting in the future. If you didn't dry it enough, just pop your bearings out and make sure there's no... Uh, bearings or anything left out like left in the sides or anything like that and just uh, wash it then so you can get all the gram out without causing any rust issues down the road but for here I'm just trying to get some of the nooks and crannies cleaned up I'm gonna clean out this inner portion just get some of that factory grease out a lot of times I'll uh, open up the axles fairly soon after I purchase a vehicle, RC vehicle, just so I can uh, make sure there is some kind of lubrication in them because sometimes you'll crack them open, they'll be bone dry and I like to have some marine grease in there, especially for your trail trucks that you might be running in some water and whatnot, mud. It's going to get all inside your axles and just be a swamp in there. So always a good thing to do, but also to keep up on it as well for maintenance. So that's uh, pretty good for myself. I'm going to go ahead and clean up this ring here. Just while you do this, you always a good idea just to check for your teeth on the ring to make sure they're not 
chipped or anything cracked check the bearings just make sure they're spinning smooth and freely not gritty and stiff I think at some point I'd like to do uh, lockers on this front and back kind of like I did on the Wheelie King just so I have equal power going to both sides do something clean up the pinion here again checking the uh, teeth on it looks pretty decent get my marine grease out so the bearings still down there I'm going to go ahead and just use my little spatula deal just grab a little dab here just kinda touch it around the top of the bearing set that aside and I'm just gonna drop the pinion back in I'm gonna have a little excess on the outside just wipe it off and just spin a little bit make sure it's seated and that will just kinda help protect that side of the bearing before uh, putting anything else in I'm going to again stab a little bit down here nothing too crazy again this isn't going you know I might do some winter time freestyles but I'm not doing any real submerges of water or mud of any sort really so it's not too big of a deal for me okay so I'm gonna go ahead and throw the uh, ring on here seat that down again this is why I like to do videos like this because somebody might swap this around and have a problem later so I like putting out these videos so that way you can kind of reference if you forgot or really need to look see where this stuff goes this pretty much will face the short side then uh, if you have enough on the pinion down there before you don't have to do this but you could always just scrape a little bit more grease onto the ring portion here and then just spin it through kind of lubricates it all up uh, the amount you put on just varies some people pack this some people put a little bit like I kind of did some will just go in the middle just all depends on your preference. I always just kind of do light to medium amount, nothing too crazy. Just enough to keep it flowing because if you do get sand in there, it's going to bind up pretty good. So having it packed might not be as helpful either. And then each side of the bearing itself, I don't know if you can see, I'm just going to put a little coat of grease on the uh, face of them just to kind of help prevent any possible future rust if it does get wet light coat nothing crazy and then from here I'm going to uh, slap on the little side covers here Those will seat in just like that. Got the big lip up here. And then down here is that lower piece. Same on both sides. Then just go ahead and uh, start those four bolts. I'm going to put them all in. And then tighten them down. Probably don't have to do it, I'm just running them all at least halfway down at first and then just coming back to uh, tighten them all down. And I'm just going to crisscross tightening them. Again, probably doesn't matter. It's just uh, what I'm doing. Kind of like you would on your lug nuts on your car or whatever. Valve cover 
on your engine. You just kind of crisscross and get evil, evil. Trying to get equal uh, pressure, tension, whatever you want to call it, on each side. So it goes down flush and clean. Just go back over them. Make sure they're all tight. That's good to go. Now I'm going to throw back on the diff cover. So that way that's nice and clean. Here you can clean up this inside before slapping it on. Just get that old grease out. Nothing too crazy. Just have a little bit of residue. Then uh, of course you got the little hump right here that's going to go over here. I'm going to tighten this back down. Do the same for these. I'll, I'll get them started. Kind of go halfway down. And then just kind of run them down in a crisscross pattern real quick. So now that that part's done, I'm going to just go ahead and run my toothbrush over the diff cover. Again, you could just clean this separate, but now that it's tightened and it's sealed up, I'm going to go ahead and uh, do it now. Just kind of wipe them off. If you want, you could uh, maybe throw some lubrication in there. I'm not too concerned about that. Never really do but just kind of slide it in and just twist it until you feel it lock in you can see the uh, pinion spin in there same for the other side and prior to putting on the <coughs> hubs these things I will just uh, I'll end up just putting a light coat of grease on this side and this side so they're done but again Slide the rod in and just spin it around until you feel it lock. See it spin. Just kind of leave those be so they don't fall out again. Then from here, I'm going to go ahead and toothbrush these real quick, like that. Nothing too crazy. They're fairly clean, but never hurts. Get a good scrub on them. If you want, you can take them to the sink, of course, or whatever. Do a quick load of cleaning. These are identical parts, so there's real no specific one to each side. But if you really want to make sure you're doing that and keeping things on the same side, then go ahead. But it doesn't really matter. They're the same. So I'm just pretty much slapping a little grease and just spinning it at the same time. I'll do the same for this side. Again, nothing too heavy. I'll just grab a little bit on that side. And this side. I'm going to just put my caps back on here. You can see that there's a hole there. You just want to line up that hole as well. When you're sliding it back through. Spin around, same thing. Line it up. So that way when you put these screws back in, you're not trying to f search for that hole. Again, just I just start one so I know it's in, but don't want to tighten it down just in case this one needs a little bit of a give to it. So once that one's started, I'll finish that one off. Flip it back over, hit the other one. Alright, now I think I'm going to go ahead and throw on these big bolts real quick. That comes with uh, these, which I'm going to clean. These little shock mounts. Well, in my case, they're my shock mounts too, but I think they might just be the sway bar mounts technically, but... Do a quick wipe on them, quick toothbrush. All right, and again, these parts are identical. Only thing you can do is really mess up and put them on upside down. Um, but once your axle is together, you can always look at the uh, diff cover, see the axial logo, and that will kind of give you that hint. 
So I'm just going to slap that on there and just hold it down. I'm going to switch bits real quick to the 2.5. You can even just hand start it like that. But that one started. Slide that down. Again, I don't put them all the way down until both are started. Then I'll drive it down all the way. Again, you don't want to use power tools on this to reassemble because it can easily strip out just because they are plastic. But yeah, on the back side, you can see the two holes, hopefully. Two holes, they just line up with those, and they just kind of fall right into place. So you really don't have to do too much guessing on if they're going in straight, because that kind of locks it in for you. So from here, um, I'm going to clean up the upper link kind of mount slash axle brace. This kind of this acts as a uh, mounting point, but also give a little bit extra strength strength to the actual tube itself to help it from uh, breaking. You see this on uh, obviously real scale monster trucks. You'll see they're beefier, but you'll see braces like this sold for uh, regular axles for like Jeep and stuff for when you're hitting the trail. So it gives a little bit more strength. But um, this will just fall into place. This will line up with that hole, this hole here, and up there. And that just slides right into place. This is obviously facing out, so you want your mount on the inside. So that way your uh, upper link's hooked to them. So just remember that. Then you're going to go ahead, grab your screws. That flat top one, short. Will go on the top. Same style will go on the other side. I need a smaller bit. Too small. I think we need two millimeter. There it is. Again, just hand start it. This one's a little crusty. This will go down here. hand start then your long one with the coarse thread coarse thread if you're not familiar just the threads really spaced out and rougher looking compared to a fine thread which I'll show you which is more close together tighter fit just that's the only difference might be a little hex hubs down as well and again just I lubricated already but here's a trick you can do um, just slap a little bit on that pin hole right there and then slide the pin through like that and the grease will kind of act as a little kind of glue and hold it in place so if you're moving it around It'll, the grease will keep in the same spot for you so you're not losing your pin. So just kind of make it even on each side, each side and then you'll line up with the slot on the hex. If you have to adjust the pin, go for it. Then this will just slide right on. So guys, this I got the other side already in. Just did that side real quick. This side really didn't want to go in all the way. It was really tough. It was the side that I think prying it off came off real stiff. Um, so it was lined up and everything. Just didn't want to squeeze in. All I did was take my neo nose that are bent. Just did that. Put this side kind of to my stomach. If you got a bench too, but. Something where it's not going to damage your thread on the other side. Just put that on either side. Just push down and kind of like press it down. And that got it to fit properly. But uh, next, just finish it off with your grub screw. 
Uh, this is metal on metal, so wouldn't hurt to grab some blue Loctite thread locker and put some on that grub screw just to make sure it doesn't come out. But um, not going to do that right now. But yeah, just tighten this down. It'll bottom out on you. So you'll know. Just grab your uh, wheel nut if you have it. Just throw it back on so you don't lose those. Those are a pain. If you uh, set those somewhere and lose them. But that's it. Um, pretty much uh, easy thing to do. Just a little time consuming. But well worth it. Just clean up the axles. Make sure they're still looking pretty good. Like I said, I'll probably go back and scrape some of this old paint off. I got stuck, but otherwise, happy uh, with it. And if you want, what I do as well, when I go to put the dry shaft back on, I will just do a light coat around this ring as well. Again, just if you are going in water and stuff, it helps prevent any rusting issues there. So... Thanks for watching. Hopefully this video helped you guys out. If you are new to the hobby or just looking to uh, see how that axle is taken apart. On the SC SMT10, I believe these are the AR60 axles. So um, I think they're around the Yetis or something. But that is uh, the rear axle. I'll probably do a video on the front as well, which will be fairly similar. But there's got some different components to the steering part. But... Um, Mainly making the videos to help anyone new to the hobby or looking to finally take apart an axle and lubricate it, clean it up and stuff like that. So please subscribe, hit that bell next to it, be notified weekly of new videos. And check out the other playlist I have and full skill fixes are on there as well. Check out Dude Vinyl, links below. And I'll see you guys next time.